Have them in times when you accidentally cleared your notifications and really, really wish you could know what that notification was all about. Well, you now can with the Samsung notification history. And to get that, go into your Samsung phone settings, that's your smartphone settings. Click on notifications, scroll down and select advanced settings, select notification history, and then toggle this feature on. Now, whenever your notification history is accidentally cleared, you can always go back to your notification history and see what that notification was about. Okay, here's a scenario. Let's say you want to run two applications on the same screen, say YouTube and a note taken app. That's quite simple using the split screen feature. Now launch the first application you wish to show on the split screen. After that, go into your recent apps as shown here, and then from there tap on the applications icon and click on the open and split screen view. Now a small edge panel appears to help you select um, the second application you wish to launch alongside this other application. Click on it and have both apps or the app, the second application you wish to launch alongside open up in the same screen. That means two applications opening on the same screen. You can easily resize the windows to what feels more comfortable for you. Let's say this is something you would often use and want to save this combination of apps. You can easily save that by tapping on the three dots here and then tap on the plus save icon as shown and that saves the shortcut to your edge panel. So whenever you wish to launch both applications, swipe out the edge panel from your smartphone and then click on the icon that has both applications and it will open them in your split screen. Now, speaking of the edge panels, they give you shortcuts to the frequently used applications on your Galaxy A52. To add more apps here, simply swipe out the edge panel from the side of your screen here, then click on the pencil icon to reveal all your applications and then drag in or delete the application you wish to add into your edge panels. By default, the edge panel feature is turned on on the Samsung Galaxy A52. If you do not like them and wish to turn this feature off, go into your smartphone settings, then click on display, scroll down to the edge panels here and toggle that off or on. Now, let me throw in a simple one here. As an Android user, you know how to take screenshots by pressing and holding the volume down and power button, but it's easier on the Samsung Galaxy A52 by swiping across the screen as seen here. To record your screen on the Samsung Galaxy A52, simply swipe down the notification pane as shown here, then click on the screen recorder icon, this one here, follow the prompt as shown to record your screen. Now you can select the source of audio here and you can do things like hiding the pane or making a scribble or doodles on your screen while recording. You might have noticed how easy enabling toggles is on smartphones like this, but there are more toggles which are not shown in your notification panel. And to add them here, all you gotta do is swipe down your notification pane, click on the options menu at the top right corner of the screen, then select edit options, and now you can drag to add or remove any of the toggles from the screen. A single swipe down the notification pane, of course, does not show you the brightness bar on your Samsung devices. Now, to get the brightness bar show, you have to swipe down twice or do the double finger swipe down to reveal the brightness bar. But there is a cute little way to show the brightness bar in a single swipe. Now, to do this, go to your navigation panel once more, click on its menu as shown here, select the quick panel layout, and from within here, you can enable the show brightness panel above the, um, yeah, click on show brightness panel above the notification, and anytime you do a single swipe down, that brightness bar gets revealed. So if you are liking this video so far, clicking on that subscribe button will be massively appreciated. Now, this is a large device obviously, and doing notification swipe down from the top corner of the screen sometimes can be out of reach. Did you know you can easily swipe down the notification pane by swiping down in your home screen to get that pane revealed? Now, to turn this feature on, simply tap and hold anywhere on your home screen, then click on settings, then enable swipe down for notification panel. While still talking about large devices, there is a one-handed feature to enable better reach and user experience for the smartphone. To turn this on, go into your settings, then click on advanced features, and then turn on the one-handed mode toggle. Now, if you have your navigation bar set to button, you can easily double tap the home key to enable one-handed mode. But if you use the gesture navigation like I do here, swiping down the center of the screen, that's the bottom edge of the screen, takes you into one-handed mode. 
and you can tap anywhere outside this window to take you out of this mode. Did you know that you could customize the amount of notifications you would see on your status bar? You can easily do that by going into your notifications panel menu, then select status bar. From here, you can customize the amount of notifications you see in your status bar. Now, whilst you're talking about the status bar, you can hide or show your battery percentage from here. Now, all you got to do is still in that notification uh, menu, find the show battery percentage and toggle that on or off depending on your use case. Dark mode is a feature that saves you battery life while making the display being easy on your eyes. Now to turn this feature on, swipe down the notification pane, then swipe to the left and you can toggle the dark mode using this icon as shown here. Did you know that you could send large files between your Samsung devices in a matter of seconds by using the nearby share feature? Simply go into your notifications here, the notification toggles, and then select nearby share. Follow the prompt to easily send files between your Samsung devices. Now, if you want to hand someone your smartphone and say, have them access just a specific application, and you don't want them snooping around your device, the pin window feature is all you need to get this done. Now, simply go into your settings, scroll down till you see the biometrics and security, Scroll down to other security settings also, and then once more, scroll down to pin window and enable this feature. Now, when you launch the application you wish to give this person access to, go into your recent apps and tap on the apps icon and click on pin this app. The user won't be able to go off this application to access other sections of this phone. And to do that, like access other sections while using the gesture navigation like I do here, they would have to swipe down and hold the center of the screen and they will be required to unlock the smartphone for access to other sections. Now, to get more icons in the home screen page and less pages to make things a little bit organized on your smartphone, you can press and hold anywhere on the home screen for some seconds, then click on settings, select the home screen layout, and from here, you can select the layout that matches your style and customize the number of icons you want to see, like in that grid, to your taste actually. Some people are not quite used to swiping up to reveal that app drawer and would rather have a button to launch the app drawer for them. So to enable this, that's the button to launch the app drawer. While selling your home screen settings, click on show app screen button on home screen and you have it enabled. If you are someone who loves customizing their home screen and wouldn't want those accidental rearrangements of the home screen icons, simply enable the lock screen layout from your home screen settings page here. If you also want to hide your application from your app drawer, while in your home screen um, settings, click on hide apps menu and from here you can select the app you wish to hide from your device's app drawer. You can reverse this process by undoing what you have done so far. So let's talk about the phone dialer application. Now when you launch this app, it gets you into the recent call logs. But if you are like me and want to have the dialer shown instead, Simply go to the menu here, that's the three dots at the top right corner of the screen, and then select open to keypad, and that's it. Another quick one here would be to sort your app drawer in an alphabetical order. Click on the three dot icons while in the app drawer, select sort and choose alphabetical order. As has been the custom for me, I'm all about the gesture based navigation on Android smartphones and not the traditional button Samsung defaults to when you use your smartphones. Now to set the Samsung Galaxy A52 to desktop-based navigation, while in your phone settings, click on display, scroll down and click on the navigation bar, then select your swipe gesture from here. You can as well stick to the button navigation if that's your thing and rearrange the button order to what feels more comfortable for you. Now here are some camera tips for you guys. Do you want to take 64 megapixel photos on the A52? You can enable this by selecting the option as shown here on your screen. Usually, the camera app defaults to 60 megapixel, but this turns on the 64 megapixel feature, and this would usually result in larger image files. Now, if you want to take both shot images on your smartphone, while in the camera app, simply swipe down on the shutter icon, and you should see the image boards go off. It's that simple. Speaking of camera modes, there is a phone mode in the camera app, which is a collaboration between Samsung and Snapchat to bring you filters and effects on the smartphone is actually a phone one. Portrait mode gives you that blur in the background to indicate professional photography. Now to increase the background blur in your photos, 
go into your portrait mode in the camera app here and then use the blur slider as you can see here to increase or reduce the depth of field in your photo. As someone who uses um, professional cameras, I love myself some manual controls. So if you are like me, the pro mode on the Samsung Galaxy's camera app should be something you should take a look at. You have controls such as the ISO, shutter angle, white balance, and a whole lot more. Also, if you take photos using the ultra wide lens of the A52, you might notice the fisheye effect sometimes. Now to balance for that or correct this um, fisheye effect, while in the camera app, go into your camera settings and click on the format and advanced options from here. You can enable the ultra wide shape correction from the settings. So let's check out the video mode on the camera app. To enable stabilized video footage on this camera, that means you don't want to have those shaky video footage, you have to turn on the super steady mode. To get that on, click on the hand icon at the top of the screen to have stabilization for video turned on. You could also add more camera options to the bottom of the camera app screen by clicking on the more options here, then click and drag which you want to add to the bottom of the camera app screen. So here are some display tips I would want to share with you guys. If the 90Hz refresh rate doesn't really make that much difference for you and you wish to save more battery life, you could change your refresh rate from 90 to 60Hz. And this can be done by going into your phone settings, select display, then click on motion smoothness from here, and then select high for 90Hz or standard for 60Hz. If you love to customize your display panel's color or look profile, while still in your display settings, click on the screen mode option you can select natural for that warm default look or vivid for a colder look and with options of white balance from within this place. Let's move over to lock screen tips. Now, I don't pray you lose your smartphone, but in case that eventually happens, you need to put up your contact information on your lock screen. And to do that, go into your phone settings, click on lock screen and then scroll down and tap on your contact information. From within here, you can enter your email address or maybe a secondary phone number that you can be reached by. While still in your lock screen settings, you can show your notification icons or have them turned off from the lock screen by toggling off the notification option from here. You can also have the details of the notification shown that's in your lock screen by tapping on the menu and selecting details. Always on feature is one thing I really love about AMOLED panels. But out of the box, it stays just for 10 seconds on the A52. Now, um, to customize this and get your lock screen permanently on, simply go to your phone settings and click on the lock screen, then select always on display. From within this menu, you can set to show always for a permanent always on display. And here are some extra tips you might find useful. Did you know that double tapping your power button launches the camera app on the Samsung Galaxy A52? Now, if you want to customize this double tap to your custom application, simply go into your settings, click on advanced features, and then select side key. From within here, you can set what happens when you double press that side key or when you press and hold the key for some time. For instance, I can select open app and then select the app I wish to launch on double press and also select what happens when I press and hold this key. And lastly, here's how to fasten up the fingerprint unlock feature on the Samsung Galaxy A52. Go into your phone settings and tap on biometrics and security. Now click on the fingerprint option here, enter your pattern or password and then turn off show animation when unlocking. Go back to the biometric settings and then enter the more biometric settings and also turn off show unlock effect feature. Now, once more, go into your app settings, that's go to your settings and click on apps. Click on the menu icon at the top right corner of the screen, select special access, and then click on the optimized battery usage. Tap here and select all. Then from the search box, you can type in biometrics and disable that too. That actually makes a whole difference. And there you have it, my top 40 tips and tricks for your Samsung Galaxy A52. Are there some tips you might want to share with us? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you like this video? Then actually hit that like button. Do not forget to share and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done those already. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Kawirati.